Hey guys, Paul Reddick here. Welcome to the Baseball Dads Podcast. And if you struggle to motivate your son, uh, get him to work harder, get him or get him to work at all, or at least hard enough to make the most of his potential, this is going to be an important podcast for you because today we're going to talk about the three motivational mistakes that we make as dads and coaches, especially in today's brand new and rapidly changing world of baseball that we're living in. I want to welcome our video viewers. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube or any other video platform, welcome. Um, if you are listening to this, you want to watch it on video, uh, down below the podcast, there'll be some links to where uh, we'll be streaming these videos. So thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it it means the world to me so my job always has been here to uh to coach dads that's always what i've done i I take between four and six phone calls a day coaching dads um and 10 years ago the conversations i had would have been 95 percent mechanics training pitches and maybe like five percent mindset motivation now 95 percent of my calls are doing three things helping dads find out what's important for their son So getting a deeper understanding of what's important to their son, uh, helping them avoid motivational mistakes and turning them around, and then giving them actual like scripts and dialogues to use to communicate with their kid. And here's why we're struggling with this. We have no experience with what our kids are going through today in the game that they're playing in, in several areas. But the game that we're, that they're playing today is radically different. We have no experience with that. The little league that my dad played is very similar to the little league that I played. But what's going on today, we just have no experience with. I was on the phone with a dad the other day. I was coaching him on, on how to talk to his son. And he said to me, he goes, you know, Paul, he said, I, I never played a championship game in my life. Never. And he says, like, my town, we had eight teams made the playoffs, a couple rounds of playoffs. The championship was on July 4th, and everybody enjoyed the summer, went to the beach, and did all these things for the rest of the, the summer. There was, like, one championship game. He's like, I played in a few nail biters, but it seems like my son is playing in these championship-level games every single weekend, and I can't understand it. I, I, I've never played in one, let alone one seemingly every weekend. And like my friend Daryl Coulter says, that we're putting professional level pressure on children and expecting them to respond like pros. So it's very difficult for dad. A dad can struggle with identifying with our kids today because they're just not playing. We never played the game they're playing. And not to mention that, we've got the technological issues, right? We, we know that, that, that when they're not in school and they're not playing baseball, or they're not you know, working on baseball, they've got their heads buried in the iPads, the iPhone, social media, Xbox, and stuff like that. The biggest technological advantage between my dad and my generation was cable TV, right? And that we have some time to adapt to that, but we just are having a hard time. A dad can really uh, have a difficult time understanding his kid today. And, and how could we? How can you understand something that we have no experience with. The third thing that is troubling dads today is trying to figure out where it's going. You know, Wayne Gretzky has that has that great quote, you know, skate where the puck is going, not where it's been. But we can't see where the puck is going to, stay, to, to, to skate there. I, I, I've heard this, I hear it several times a week that dads are saying to me, you know, my son is 8, 9, 10, 11, whatever it is. And he's like, every year it kind of gets... The pressure gets to be a little bit, you know, more. The intensity gets dialed up. The travel is farther away and more expensive. The the intensity of the season and the commitment is just getting longer. It used to be six months, and then it was nine months, and then it looks like as he as he moves up, eventually it's going to be a year round commitment. He won't be able to have time to play other sports or do other things. And and now they're getting faced with this. You either got to do this, or you don't, or or like you know. Your whole life's going to come to an end. Your kid may never make the most of his potential. So now here's a dad in a very tough spot saying, my goodness, do I want to not give my kid the opportunities that he could possibly have, all, you know, make the most of all his opportunities? And it's tough because I, I talk to parents who are canceling family vacations in order to play travel baseball. And it's difficult. It's, it's a tough, um, it is a tough situation that we face as dads. And, and we... We tend to use the motivational techniques that worked a generation ago. 
and they're just not going to work on today's player. So let's talk about the three motivational mistakes that we make and how we can how we can um, make sure that we avoid them. So the first motivational mistake that we make is we think that what motivates us will motivate them. I say this to dads literally four or five times a day, every single day. Your son could look like you, he could talk like you, he could walk like you, he could he could <laughs> have everything the same, have the same eye color, hair, everything. You could call him Junior. He is not you. He is a unique individual. Forget about the things that motivated you. Every player is unique. And you never want to have uh, a situation where you are trying to have your son do the same things that you did. I know that's like our instinct, right? But, But remember, our job as a father is to get our sons to surpass us, not just to mimic what we did, but to complete what we did. That'll be another podcast. And our job is to get our kids to surpass us. So dads will say, well, all I wanted to do was go play catch or hit off the tee or throw the ball against the wall or pick up rocks and hit them and practice baseball. I get it. But also understand, let's just face facts. A lot of that stuff that we did, we kind of call it working hard now. It was entertainment then. And now we kind of like to go back and say we were working so hard. No, we were, you know, that was what, that was the, the things that you did as a kid now. It was entertainment. There was like, you know, even with cable, I think there was like 30 channels when it first came out. And if you didn't catch your shows when they were on, they weren't on anymore, right? Or if you're active, you, you know, there weren't these scheduled activities that we have today with all of the opportunities that kids have. We were doing a lot of that stuff for entertainment. But now the kids are different. They've got their shows on her 24-7, Netflix and iTunes and on demand. And they got all these gadgets and stuff to entertain them. And it's becoming harder and harder to get that attention. So understand that what motivates you will not motivate them. But embrace that difference. The key now, especially in today's new world, is to try and find out how your son is unique. And we're going to talk about that in the second motivational mistake. Trying to bring about that uniqueness in your son, especially... Because now there's just so many more options of the things that they can experience and participate in. So what motivates you will not motivate them. The second motivation mistake that we make is we think what motivates others will motivate them. Please listen closely to what I'm about to say to you. I have a lot of dads that will say to me, you know, there's this kid Johnny on a team and and he... And he gets up at four o'clock in the morning and he runs sprints. And then he does, a, you know, an hour of, of transcendental meditation to center and focus. And then he does virtual reality hitting drills. And then he goes to school. And then he goes after school, he goes and he sees his, his strength trainer. And then he goes to his hitting coach. And then he goes to his nutritionist. And then he goes to his pitching coach. And then he, you know, then he goes into homes, does, does homework and he goes to sleep. And while he's sleeping, he's listening to subliminal sounds of, of, balls being hit by bats and then he gets up at four o'clock in the morning does it all over again never takes a break and never gets tired everybody's got that robo baseball kid in your town right or in your league or your academy everybody's got that kid do not try to motivate your son based on what another kid is doing first of all never compare your son to another kid Never do that. That is a recipe for disaster. That is a way to break trust with your son. When you compare your son to another kid, you are basically saying, that kid is better than you. Why don't you become better? And what you're subliminally saying to your son or subconsciously saying to your son is you're not enough and you're less. I'm going to tell you guys, never compare your son to another kid. On the other side of that, everybody likes to think, wow, look, this kid won the MVP of the tournament, hit a couple home runs, and he's got 12 scouts looking at him and stuff like that when he's 12 years old. He's got three D1 offers. I am going to tell you that how that plays out in the D1 professional world, it's, it's, trust me, that train hits a wall more times than not. And nobody is ever around when that sucker hits a wall. And they never want to see what happens when that robo kid becomes 14, 15. It's like, oh my goodness, that's a girl. I, I, I never noticed them before. Or wait a minute, there's other opportunities. You mean my friends are out of the mall or out the movies or doing things? Or there's all these different things that maybe I can do? These I never thought about that because I've been just doing baseball 24-7. When that sucker hits the wall, it is ugly. Ugly. And I get the emails and I talk to the dads. The dads call me when it hits the wall and they say, you know, last year all he wanted to do was work on baseball, work on baseball, travel in tournaments. Now all of a sudden this girl is calling him and he wants to go there. Well, you know, I'm sorry that that's, you know, take that up with God. Take that up with mother nature. That's, (laughs) that's the way the world works, you know, but I'm telling you, don't make that comparison and don't think that what motivates some other kid, because 
how do I say this in the nicest way? You, usually what is motivating that kid on the other side is usually not very healthy, not very healthy. And I talk to a lot of dads and, and that, that miss that moment. And, uh, and I, I, one of the most famous stories of our baseball dads program is the first call that I did doing five, six, seven calls. And if you want to do a five, six, seven call, you go to five, six, seven dad, um, dot com and, and you can see all the information about the book and the calls and stuff there. But um, he, he, he basically said that they could achieve 100% of what they achieved with about 70% of the effort. That he just pushed his kid too hard and he put his kid in too much stuff. And he said they, they could have taken that other 30% and they could have done just normal kid stuff. Right? And just did normal whatever, family time. Just even, he, he, he said to me they, they could have just sat on the couch and did nothing and just you know vegged out, watched TV. Um and, and it would have been a healthier relationship between him and his son. It would have been a healthier um, upbringing for him and his son because his son would have had a more variety of experiences. And here's the other thing too. I'm not saying, a lot of people confuse that I'm saying like, well, should we not work hard? Should we not play baseball? No, 100% you need to work hard. So one of the things that, I, for all the players that I've coached, and now I've been coaching for 24 years. Is it 25 years, 24 years? 24 years. Yes, I'm going to be 44. 24 years. And I'm going to tell you this. I 100% I believe you should work very, very hard. Once you take that spot on the team, you have a responsibility to prepare yourself fully. That means you show up in the season prepared. You maintain your preparation through practice and workouts and training during the season, doing some maintenance work, and, and you recover after the season. You work as hard as you can in practice. No way, shape, or form am I saying that you should not work hard. You should work hard at whatever you do. If you join a club at school, if you're playing another sport or you're in some other activity, you should take the responsibility that you took a spot on the team you took a uniform you took a spot on that club and you should work as hard as you possibly can and i believe the more the the, the the selfish motivators behind that are not the true reason i believe that you should work hard because you have a responsibility to your teammates to show up and to honor that spot that you took on the team and that you contribute as fully as you can with that spot and do everything you can to help your team succeed so to the second motivational mistake, what motivates others will not motivate your son. Never make the comparison. And trust me, the other side of that robo kid or even the sub robo kid who's just super committed, goes to the cages every day. Trust me, on the other side of that, nobody ever wants to compare themselves to that kid when it hits the wall. And then we get the, the exceptions where we say, well, what about Bryce Harper? And all these? Okay, God made Bryce Harper. Uh, it wasn't the time in the cage that made him, right? Just like LeBron James, okay? There's just there's people that are just simply better humans. And what we do is we take these better humans and we look at their work, their what they did, and we say, well, if I just did what they did, I'll have what they have. If it, 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 It's just not that easy. It's just, it's just not the way that God set up the world. Um, the third motivation mistake is that we think what should motivate them will motivate them. So I'm going to talk about a video that I saw on social media a couple months ago, just really, it's just a really disappointing, uh, I, I don't want to use a negative word, but it was just really disappointing. But here, here's the thing. If I had a whole bunch of 16 year old kids in front of me and I said, does everybody want to play D1? All the hands would go up. Nobody would raise their hand and say, I don't want to play D1. And if I were going to motivate them and I said, come on, don't y'all want to be D1? Don't y'all, excuse me, don't y'all want to make it to the show? Don't y'all want to make it to the pros? Don't y'all want to get drafted? They all go, yeah. Nobody raises their hand and says, I don't want that. But I'm going to tell you that there are kids in that, in that group that don't want that. And, and the mistake that we make is that we think that there's like this level to be achieved and that everybody wants the level. Here's the thing. Everybody, everybody would like to play in the major leagues, but most of them just kind of want it to happen to them. You know, they would just kind of like to be born with it. Um, and here's the other thing too, is that a lot of kids they kind of know when you get to be 15 and 16, they, they kind of know that, you know, it's probably, you know, not going to happen that they saw a kid who graduated, you know, a year ago and he's, and he's not playing D1 and he hit like 450 and they're hitting like 350 and they don't, they're not as good as he is. They, they kind of see the writing on the wall, but they'll never admit that. So in this video, this coach was just kind of like berating his players, trying to get them fired up, which I never understood why baseball people want to get fired up, want to get rah-rah. So I, I can tell you from experience that this is not a great system because I burned out a team 
When I was a young coach, I completely burned out a team. I wanted my kids sprinting everywhere, intense focus on the game. I had like every kid on the bench had like a chart. And when they weren't keeping the chart, I wanted them on the fence, you know, cheering, rah, rah, rah. And, and I just burnt them out. They just could not play at that level of intensity for long. Because here's what happens is that you get a team all fired up. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're screaming. And then they're like, oh, I'm all fired up. I'm ready to play. And well, I'll be up in like two innings or I play left field and I haven't had a ball hit to me in two innings, and I, I, got, you know, I got some backup. It's not like football and basketball where we get fired up, we run on the court of the field, and we can kind of take a little bit more action. Baseball is a game that you got to kind of, it has to come to you, unless you're the pitcher. And do you really want your pitcher, you know, super amped up, or do you want your pitcher kind of have that relaxed uh, focus and intensity, like more Mariano Rivera like as they're pitching? So in this video, this, this guy was just trying to fire up his team and he was going like, you guys need to work hard. And he pointed to some guy who played, I don't know, in the minors. He goes, that guy made it. He got his glory. And you guys are going you know, to fall short or whatever he was saying. And then he said something really that, that really aggravated me, really upset me. Is he's, He said, you're going to have plenty of time when you get to your girl later on. Let me tell you something. If a coach said that to my kid, we're going home. We're going home. It's just... It was just a horrible thing to say. Completely inappropriate, completely out of line. As a parent, that is not your job as a coach to have those discussions with my son. We're going home if, 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 if that's my kid. But what happened is all the kids kind of scattered, right? They all got, they all got, they, they got motivated. And here's the thing. That's enough to get it going, not enough to keep it going. So you can scare kids. You can manipulate them. You can make them think they want something they don't want. That will get it going. That will not keep it going. You'll get 9 to 12 minutes of motivation out of that. And you can scare them into saying, hey, that guy's working harder than you. When you, when you guys face each other, you're going to lose. That's fear. That's not motivation. So true motivation is, is, is finding out what's truly important to your son. And then using that as positive, productive leverage to motivate them. So we do this, and the, the five, six, seven is the crux of what we do. Like I said, you go to five, six, seven dad.com, you can learn all about the book and all the different techniques that we use. But doing a five, six, seven will get to the deepest motivators of your son. And then once I know what's truly important to a player, now I can just kind of press in the right spot to motivate them and not simply just say, You want to play D1, you want to be in the show, there's some other guy working hard. That's fear, manipulation, and thinking what should motivate them will motivate them when it doesn't. Why would I want to take the time to find out what makes each individual that I'm coaching unique? What motivates them? Because if I can find out their five, six, seven, I can create a motivated person for life. Not just something that's going to motivate them for nine to 12 minutes. Now, let me tell you something. It can look great. You can scare kids. You can manipulate them. You can get them all fired up. And you know what that makes for? That makes for a great BP session right? Kids are, kids are hustling, running from station to station, getting their cuts in, right? It looks good. And here's a trick. When there's a lot of action and there's an organization around that action, it makes the coach look like he knows what he's doing. It makes the coach look like he knows what he's doing when there's organized action. So what should motivate them will not motivate them. And most, most guys use manipulation or fear or they guess. Or they think just like, hey, everybody should want this, right? Doesn't everybody want the glory? Well, I'm going to tell you, that's not the case. I, I've, I've talked to more than a few major leaguers that have told me they do not want to play baseball. But they're playing baseball because of the money. And they're playing baseball because they don't know how to do anything else. They don't know how to do anything else. In fact, I had a, uh, a conversation with um, just kind of a, a random, it was, it was just kind of a, a coincidental thing. I was talking with this guy and we were kind of like, what do you do? What do you do? And, um, and you know, I told him what I did. And he's like, oh, you know, like my nephew's here. He was a college baseball player. Kid came over. He was, he was a D2 college player. He was just graduating. And he, he, in our conversation, he more or less says that he regrets all the time he spent in baseball, he thought he was going to get drafted up until like two years ago. And then he had to go play baseball in all these summer leagues because their coaches wanted to play in the summer leagues. And there was, and and he couldn't work during the school year because the NCAA doesn't allow you to work. And all of a sudden now he's a senior and he's realizing that a lot of his other classmates, 
had jobs and got experience and did internships and they now have gotten some jobs with those entry level jobs with those companies that they were an intern for now all of a sudden he's like this is great i just spent the last four years majoring in baseball now i got i can't use that now i got to go out into the real world and i'm starting from scratch when the pe when the guy people that i'm team or classmates with that weren't in baseball are kind of off and running and he felt a little bit lost and and again i'm talking about balance balance There has to be a balance between the two. So the first motivational mistake is we think what motivates us will motivate them. Not true. We think what motivates others or what motivates others will motivate them. Not true. And we think what should motivate them will motivate them. Not true. The the real thing that we need to find out is our deep intrinsic motivators of our son. What makes them unique? What really drives them and how do they feel important? So you can check that out, 567dad.com. You can check out the book. Uh, The baseball edition of the book is out. And also there's opportunity there to learn about the 567 and even if you want to do a call with me. So thank you guys so much for listening to the Baseball Dads podcast and I hope you have a great week and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.